Good day, church. I hope you're well, and uh, welcome to the NCMI Leadership Time. Uh, it's a real privilege for me to be sharing with you this morning. Um, I'm going to be sharing on a subject that's quite commonly spoken of among, amongst the young people, but I want to elaborate and open it up. I'm going to be sharing on fighting the good fight, and this is going to be a strong military-grade message. Um, I'm going to go over in short analysis the who, what, where, and why of this fight for the faith. And in brief, we see in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul says, fight the good fight to Timothy. Um, and in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he encourages Timothy again to pass on the truth and faith to others, uh, bringing the current and next generation to readiness. Um, this is the fight that we are called to pass on. The, we're passing on the baton of faith and we're passing on the baton of life. To young people. 1 Timothy 6 verses 12, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it says, fight the good fight for the true faith. And it's important because many people are putting their faith in things that are not true, but we are called to a faith that is true. Fight the good fight of the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. And then again in 2 Timothy 2 verses 1 to 2, this is also the New Living Translation, Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. So number one, the who. Who are those that this baton of faith, as well as this fight for the faith, passes on to? Well, to start, let me just say for those who are listening right now, in this leadership time, uh, while the passing of this baton um, is, is in process, it is a process, um, it's a journey, and it's often organic, you and I right now who are listening, we are the current holders and transferers of this faith. And it gets given to those who will eventually hold authority and influence over others. Now, I would say that the most sacred sphere right now, the most important and sacred sphere where people are, are slowly um, holding on to this authority, or they're gaining this authority, they are, they are being given this influence, or they will nearly shortly to come have that influence in the next few years are those that are in the family unit, those that are learning to, to raise young minds within the family unit. And I would say that right now the enemy has his primary, primary targets um, aimed at the family. Um, the men and the fathers who are leading those family are, are well within the enemy's scope. And uh, together with those who lead and influence these young minds and young hearts and spirits in, in the family unit is where I would say the enemy is putting his, his strongest efforts against. I did a study recently on, on how, on, on the age of, of all generations across the world. What is the average age of the world right now? And the average age of the world is 29 years which means that uh, half of the world is older than 29 years and half of the world is younger than 29 years. And the next oldest age grouping, uh, majority age grouping older than 29 is at 46. So basically in a nutshell, that says that the, the, the majority of the world is 46 years and younger with the bulk of the age resting at 29 which is very interesting. It says to me that, that there is a huge uh, wave of young people that are going to start uh, putting their mark on the earth in the years to come. In the next 10, 20 years, a young generation's mind and heart and thinking is going to be the thing that permeates the world. And we've got a very important role to help protecting faith and truth uh, in and amongst this generation. Um, that is our call right now, um, and that's the mandate God's given us for them. Now, for those living um, who might be younger, uh, college, uh, school going age right now, you know, growing up typically can be all sorts of things. It can be fearful, it can be tumultuous, it can be exciting, it can be wondrous, it can be frightening, um, it can be many things. And, um, and I know right now, they, young people grow up with many questions um, and many dreams in their hearts. Um, and many uh, answers that they're seeking for questions that they don't yet have right, right now. Um, and in the middle of this, we have a modern culture 
um, globally, which just has waves of influence being pushed over young people. Uh, these people pushing the trends and the cultures, these movers and shakers and influencers have got great megaphones at their, disposable, at their disposal, which, which come into the inlet of our young generation's attention. And, and many of these people, day by day, they are just, they're just letting hot air come out of their mouths. Um, they, they're presenting to young people nothing but distraction and lies. Um, and they're very often trying to change what is true. Um, and they want to replace it with some sweet sugar-coated, glitter-dusted, uh, vainly virtuous bunch of lies to these young people. You know, I recently watched a documentary about a festival um, in the USA that they were trying to promote. And it was going to be the next big thing. And uh, those that were part of the team, all the, the movers and shakers and the models and the the, the hip-hop stars, I, I just observed them. I observed their language as they communicated amongst each other. And I was, really, uh, I was really intrigued by how they talked to each other because I honestly didn't hear an authentic word come out of their mouth, not even once. It seemed as though it was just spin. They were just spinning one thing uh, to the other thing uh, across the table. One person would spin this and the next person would spin something bigger. And it was just hot air the whole time. It was pretentious. Um, it was fake. There was nothing that was real uh, that, that, that I could pick up amongst their talk. And it just happened continuously. Um, it's like they were just believing their own lies and spinning bigger and bigger to impress uh, across the table, to be the, you know, the head honcho at the table. And it was quite interesting just to hear their language and just to see that there is no truth coming out of their mouth ever. It's just hot air. It's baseless and it's unhelpful. And so amongst all these dark forces trying to falsely influence these questions, it's our job to go to the young generation and answer the questions they are asking. Because if they start listening to the lies that are being presented to them, it's going to hurt them and us immensely. And those whom this may resonate with, young people, please, I want you to know that God knows you. He really knows you and he loves you and he hears you. And, and I just want to know the things that I want you to know that what you're praying towards, the things that burn inside your heart, the things you dream about, the unknowns and the passions you have. I just want you to know that in God's time, they will be provided. God knows you. God loves you. And he knows what you need and he knows when you're ready to receive those things. And I want to, to encourage you to stand your ground in faith. Fight for the thing and the promises that God has given you. Stand your ground and fight the good fight in faith. God hears you and God knows you. Number two, what is our fight? And I want to say that our fight is a spiritual fight. And it requires spiritual discernment, spiritual understanding. It requires obedience and faith. It requires spiritual strength. And, and I want to say that our spirits need to be more alive than our souls, which is our mind and our hearts and our wills. Um, many things are going to try and influence your mind, heart, and your will. But the thing that's going to influence those things the most is having a strong spirit. So we need to have a stronger spirit than just our souls. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says this, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, no, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world. We know that the world is dark, being influenced by these rulers and authorities, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Have you ever heard of the phrase, cooking the books? See, the attack right now, I believe, is a dismantling and a falsifying of the truth. And there is no greater truth right now uh, than what we can find in this one book, and that's the Bible. That is our ultimate source of truth from God. It's the Bible. And uh, the hands and hearts that play in the dark right now, I believe they're trying to cook that book. They are trying to cook the book. They're trying to cook the book of the Bible, and, uh, and, and we need to defend it because it's happening pretty much everywhere you look. It's happening in schools, in universities. It's happening within the tech space. It's happening within the home. It's happening within the roles of mothers and fathers, and it's happening more and more so against the true God-given identities to men, women, and children. The identity of people is under attack right now, and it is spiritual warfare, and we need spiritual warfare tactics to fight back. And so I want to just lay aside quickly six tactics that the enemy is using against us and four tactics that we should be uh, 
warfaring back with. Six tactics used by the enemy against us. The one is the enemy, the enemy is trying to deter us, which comes through the form of scaring us and fear. So whenever there is fear being pushed against us and scaring us, that's the enemy trying to deter us. We also see that the enemy is trying to disrupt us. And I would say that he's trying to do that through the, the trappings of our flesh, trying to break up our marriages, trying to confuse things. The enemy is trying to disrupt us. We also see that there's denial, that the faith that we belong to is being denied in many regions in many ways. Um, it's almost like the cancel culture over Christianity. There's denial. There's attempts of degrading and shaming that, that if you're a, a person of faith, that you're, that you're second class. Um, there's heaps of deceiving, as we already know, that's being permeated throughout the world. And there's every attempt to destroy us. But I want to say that we have, we've been given four very strong tactics uh, within this warfare that we need to learn and strengthen. And the first one is to, to learn how to disarm. We are called to disarm lies and error. That is one of our spiritual tactics, is to disarm. We're also called to disengage, which means that when there's you know, hot air being blown around the table, don't entertain it. Don't put your hope in politics. Don't get involved with unnecessary arguments and wastefulness. We need to disengage sometimes and know where we are meant to use our energy to stand our ground. We're also called to defend. This is defending the truth. The truth that we know comes from God's word. Um, and also not only defending the truth, but defending those who are learning to carry the truth. Those that God has entrusted to us. The people and the, influ the influencees that God has given us to look after. We are called to defend them. And lastly, we're called to defeat. We are called to defeat sin and bondage and slavery and uh, behaviors that are that are completely ungodly we call to defeat those things um, that are over people's lives uh, we have been given a victorious spirit we have been given a victory in christ um, that sets us free from sin and the causes of sin so our our strategy through through this warfare are those four things to disarm, disengage, defend, and defeat. And our weapons that we use within these tactics, our primary weapons is the word of God and prayer. We have to get closer to God's word and closer to prayer um, in order to use those four things. Number three, where is our fight? I want to say that our fight is within two battlegrounds. The first is in your mind. It's within your actual, your, yourself. Um, we need to learn that, that while our, our mind and our heart and, our, and, and our, our wills can be used for all good, um, if those things are taken uh, and are captured, if those things are bombed with lies, um, we are not going to be strong enough to stand and have a decent spiritual inlet and outlet uh, with authority over our lives. And we'll actually end up losing the fight of faith. We have to make sure that we are, we are first fighting the battleground in our own minds and our own hearts and making sure that our spirits are strong. And the second battleground is your future. Um, I say your future because along the timeline of your future are many people that God has given you influence over. Those that stand upon that timeline with you. And we need to know that as we walk into our future, there are things to fight for. There are people to fight for. Um, there are opportunities that we shouldn't leave an empty blank space um, of loss and faithlessness in a time where God gave us to have victory. So I would say that the, the where of our fight is in us and it's in our future and all those that God has called us within that timeline of our future. And I want to land with this last thing and that's the why. Why? And I would say this. Most people listening to this message right now love themselves to the point where that if death was on their door, they would run away. They would go see a doctor. They would avoid death as much as they possibly could. Why? Because we have a healthy love for life. We have a healthy love for ourselves. And death is not something I think anyone right now is praying for. Um, and yet Jesus also loves us. And the difference is that Jesus was willing not to run away from death in his love for us. He actually ran straight towards it. And that shows the kind of intense love that God has for you and for I and for every precious person on this earth. And we need to be careful on the condition of our own spiritual health, not to murder people in our minds not to hate them in our hearts, not to tear them down by our words, and also not to use them as chess pieces um, on, on a greedy gain for ourselves um, as we walk out our faith. We need to make sure that we are holding the, the same love and, and uh, compassion and affection that Jesus holds for us, for me, for you. I know that I love me. I know that I don't uh, want to die anytime soon. But I also know that 
that Christ loves me even more so that he actually went to death. He actually, he went to the grave for me. And thank God that he was risen up from, from the dead um, to give us a hope and a life. And I would say that is our biggest why, because God loves us with a precious love. And Jesus, Jesus' love for people is so precious. Jesus and his love is our reason why. And the world needs to know about it. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. But Jesus loves every person in our now and in our future. And we need to be ready to fight this fight for them. Bless you guys. We'll see you soon.